Hey guys, Gameboy3080 here once again with another box. Today I have something I haven't seen before, and just now I've been able to uh, send the offer and get it accepted for this unique machine. I got it specifically because I thought I knew I could power it up. Because looking at the listing, it showed it had the standard 4 pin uh, power connector of a Clevo plug. An older Clevo plug. That's never going to focus, is it? Nope. Okay, so let's not even try. And. Oh, it's a tape that's got the strings in it. How awful. There we go. So this machine, I know for a fact it already has some damage to it. Let's see how bad it really is. Didn't seem too bad. Oh dear. <laughs> and here it is. This is the Royal 8.5 something or other. I've never heard of the laptop brand of Royal. Until now. Seems pretty standard. There's a memory module here. There is a sticker here that I'm going to remove because I think it's useless. Because it's covering up a power supply thing saying 20 volts. 2.5 amps, 50 watts max, and I'm not sure if it means if it's covering up a 1 for 150, or if it is just 50 watts. And it is just 50 watts, perfect. As in not perfect. Uh, in here, in this bag here, is what's left of the which hinge is it? Right hinge because it has broken apart. I knew about this when I bought it. And the left hinge is not much better. It's cracking around the base as well. Oh, and it's missing the left and right mouse buttons. Perfect. Alright, well let's see if my little theory pays off here. It's making a noise. That's good. Uh, the keyboard can just lift straight up, it seems, to reveal a cooling fan. Here's some vents here. Never seen a laptop that was so eager to be opened up. Hey, it's firing up. It seems to be working. Five hundred something megabytes of RAM. Hard disk, I believe it said it was a 3 gig. Let's see what's on it. Ooh, Windows 95. Let's tilt you guys up. I'm going to see if I can get myself at a little bit of an angle here so I can actually see it. It's got a 12.1 inch screen. Claims high resolution, 800 by 600. Yeah. 
Wow, it seems to be working really well. Building driver information. Oh, nice. Alright, this does seem to be a bone stock version of Windows 95. I know, we got something up here. What's all this? Ooh, Microsoft Scheduler. This is a Microsoft add-on thing, it seems. And the Start menu keeps disappearing. You can almost right-click. I can almost left-click. Can I tap to click? No, I cannot. Perfect. There we go. Now let's see what we got on here for programs. There we have Netscape 7. Oh man. Netscape. Now we have some taxing tool. 1998. We have MS-DOS prompt. Epson, that's for printer. Crystal Caliburn. Yep. Uh, player guy, that must be a game. We have a Bitware. Bitware. We have Adobe Acrobat. Accessories, games, what's installed. Uh, all the standard, and then Crystal Caliber and 1.03. Huh. I think I'll zoom you guys in here, let you guys get a little bit better look. Maybe that's a good view for you. There you go, that's better. Uh, Netscape 7 with free AOL and unlimited internet. Oh man! This thing is a time capsule of the late 90s. But it's working. The hinge is busted to hell, but it's working fine. I think with enough super glue, this will almost be reusable. I need the best way to save a laptop with bad hinges is to open up the screen panel and loosen the hinges so that uh, it's, there's not as much force being put on, so that there's not going to be any more cracking of the screen base. Because that's what happened here. I'm going to take these out just to show you. There you go. Here's the main bit here. This is a massive piece of double shot plastic that just got hard over the years and went snap. I hope autofocus was enough for you there. So that's all you're getting. But yeah, I was able to get this uh, machine from an eBay store, an actual store somewhere in California, I believe, or maybe Washington, called Recycled Goods. They have tons of old servers and stuff as well. This is what I could get because most everything they have is big enough to require freight. I am going to take a look at some other things here. Internet Explorer. Yep. Internet Mall. Internet News. Multimedia. That's all the same. System Tools. That's all the same. Calculator. Character Map. I guess that's for remapping that keyword. I didn't know anything had that kind of functionality in 1995. That's really cool. Dial up Networking. Hyper Terminal. Imaging, notepad, online registration, phone dialer, word pad. I'm going to launch uh, Crystal Calibre and see if it even works. Published by Starplay. It seems to be working perfectly fine.
Hopefully I don't need the mouse button for this. Oh, it's just the pinball game. Who would have thought? Oh well. I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting than that. Because old Alt F4 still works even if the left mouse button doesn't. What I want to do is go to properties so we can see what this thing has actually got. In terms of processor, 64 megs of RAM, uh, Pentium 1. Yep. Uh, Windows 95, 4.0C. Device Manager. Will this actually tell us what processor we have? I would use a mouse, but uh, I don't have any PS2 mice around me right now. Another keyboard, hard disk. Maybe system devices? Well, that's not very helpful. Apparently this is a Logitech touch scroll touchpad. Didn't know Logitech made anything like that. Now was it Windows 95 and 98 that introduced the task manager by right clicking the taskbar? Can't tell, so I'm gonna do Yield, Control, Alt, Delete. That's a closed program. Many of you know that's that's nothing. I wish I could tell what megahertz this was. Maybe it'll, it'll say in the BIOS. So Windows And we are going to restart. Oh, gee, thank you, computer. I'm going to smash F2. I'm going to control delete restart because it said smash delete to get in. There's my original plan, but it didn't show on the screen. There we go. NCMOS, power management, enable, suspend, resume, hard disk, timeout, no, advanced CMOS setup. Come on, what processor do I have? That's all I want to know. What megahertz? It doesn't say MMX, so this will be either a 50, or 60, or a 75 megahertz, if I remember my Pentium 1s correctly. Huh, so this was last used in 2006, I guess CMOS battery is really well working. It's really annoying how it's not telling me the processor. It's even more annoying how bad Windows is at telling me the processor. I'm sure I could look up the model someplace, but there's so little information about this. Uh, model computer that this is the first I've ever even seen the bio screen of it. Main processor Pentium MMX. Oh, so it does tell us there. I need to pause that video screen so you guys already know what processor speed it is. That's really hard. I don't I don't see a MMX 
uh, sticker on that thing, so this could be upwards of 120 megahertz. 233, wow. 233 megahertz Pentium 1. So this was quite a powerful machine for 1998. Yeah, that's one, one, one of the things we're on. I'm not sure when Pentium 2s were in laptops, and I know Pentium 3s were in 1999. Maybe this was towards the tail end of the Pentium MMX's uh, reign. I think MMX came out at the same time as 2 for as a budget option anyway, so what do I know? But yeah, that is going to be the end of the Royal 85, whatchamacallit. You see the title of the video, you know what it's called, but for me, it's still all a mystery. Let's go ahead and shut you down. I do need to be very careful with closing the hinge because, well, it's completely dead. So, slowly does it. Close enough. And we've done the power on test. Sorry about the jump cut, the camera almost fell down. So let's go ahead, tour the laptop to finish up the video. I got the some top screen up here. I hope it didn't just break it, but whatever, some top screen here. And we have the left hinge on its last legs. <laughs> you can see it's pretty cracked already. Right hinge died some years ago. I'm not even gonna guess when that died. Got a the power that we were using, keyboard, monitor, serial, printer, even a MIDI game port here. Have our compact disk drive here, a floppy drive right beneath it, some audio jacks, and just like this is where the hard drive goes. Not even gonna guess how you take that apart. Uh, this big square here is actually just a floppy drive, it seems, so not worth taking that apart. And underneath here says that that could be the memory, but I don't have any screwdriver with me. It said we have 64 megabytes, and I guess that's some very old form of RD RAM or something. Alright, we take out. Uh, this panel here and remove it. Battery, yep, should slide right out. Alright, so the battery does have some corrosion, but it's not anywhere near as bad as I thought. Uh, oh, ho, ho. this is a nickel metal hydride battery pack at 12 volts, 3600 milliamps. Model. 3600 series. Oh, I've been saying that this computer model is 85 something. It's actually HB8603. So I was wrong the whole time. Perfect. Yeah, I need to figure out a way to clean this battery without actually dying. Nickel metal hydride, so if I pierce it, it won't immediately kill me. Just might not want to do that at all. How do I put on the battery cover? Ooh. We have to take a look inside the battery cover. You can see a speaker. Anyways, that will do it. Just some fun messing around with an old laptop. I do that a lot. If you guys enjoyed, please do go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, Gambino. I'll see you in the future.